can use any curry paste you want. So YouTube recommended me this uh, Jamie Oliver homemade fried rice video and the only only reason that I will do a video on this is because he dubs this it's Singapore style fried rice it's Singapore style and having lived in Singapore my whole life I've never ever seen a fried rice like this but I'll talk more as we go along let's watch the video together now I'm gonna give you a dish that my family absolutely love it's Singapore style fried rice and Okay, 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 slowly, slowly, we take this slowly. It is a brilliant dish in this environment where we're kind of making do with things we have and haven't got, right? There's thousands of recipes, but it's having that kind of sumptuous rice and it's got tang and seasoning. And of course it's littered with beautiful veggies. Classically, there'd be some kind of like smoky ribs or ham or prawns. He says classically, eh? You know what's the biggest issue about Singaporean fried rice? Is that it does not exist. There is no such thing as a Singaporean fried rice. And he still says like smoky ribs eh. What the? Smoke your audience ah maybe. We've got no meat in the fridge. I've got bacon and I've got a bit of sausage. So I thought I'd put that in there as well. I've got an egg. Veg. I've got a bit of sausage. <laughs> okay, this one right, just on this plate alone right, all the ingredients are a mistake. Let me explain. One egg, later you'll see, for the whole pan of fried rice, right, is garbage. Eh. How can you call egg fried rice when you only use one egg? The proportions is shit. Eh. Second thing is, I've got a little bit of sausage, so I'm going to throw it in there. You, you cannot, right, say something is Singaporean style, right, and then cook it however you like. Eh. You get what I mean? Let me let me reverse the situation, okay? So I'm gonna make a Italian style bolognese. And then I just happen to have some lak chong. And then I just put the lak chong in, right? And then I call it Italian style. <laughs> and then he uses bacon. Bacon is delicious. Bacon is nice. But how can you be using bacon in a Singapore style fried rice when a big part of Singapore's community is halal? So far, there has been no reflection of our culinary influences, nor our society. Egg. Veg-wise, there's bits and pieces of tatty stuff. So I've got two little asparagus spears here. The non-Singaporeans watching this will be so confused. Like, why am I mad with asparagus? The thing is, right, um, hawker centers, right, which is like how the biggest part of our food culture in Singapore. If I were to go into a hawker center and I could get $1 for every a straw, every um, piece of asparagus there is, right, in the hawker center, right, I will get exactly zero dollars. We very rarely use asparagus in our cooking. I don't think I've ever seen it in a hawker center before because these are very expensive locally and just using this alone, right, will spike the hawker prices to unreasonable amounts. It further shows that he doesn't care about the Singapore style. He just happens to have this asparagus and this like scrappy leftover vegetables at home and then he just uses it. Here, there's a bit more at the back. I've got two corn, two tomatoes, a bit of broccoli, um, some leek. Ignoring the fact that we don't use broccoli in our fried rice, right? Not even yang zhou cao fan, not even nasi goreng, not even in almost any fried rice you can find. And especially not this purple broccolini, purple I'm not even sure what it is. I don't think you can even get it locally here. Singapore style fried rice, by the way. And some cabbage and some carrot. You can swap in and out any veggies that you've got. I'm just going to slice the asparagus here. We've got our tomatoes here that can go into quarters. Sprouting broccoli here. You can use regular broccoli, cauliflower if you like. So look, there's our broccoli. Now, when it comes to the leek, you could use onion, spring onion. And I'm going to just try and finely slice that. Cabbage. Now you could use Savoy cabbage, Chinese cabbage, spinach, bok choy, pak choy. From a nutrition point of view, from your body, it's like, yes, come on, give it to me. I have got frozen prawns, which I found at the bottom of the freezer. 
you can thaw them. Using prawns is fine, but the way that he says that frozen prawns that I found at the bottom of the freezer, right? He doesn't care. He really doesn't care. Now, this would be a perfect fried rice recipe, right? Because uh, fried rice is great for clearing leftovers. That's, um, I would say, 90% of the point of fried rice. The only thing that I cannot get over with is that he names this Singapore-style fried rice. Out, just putting them in a the bowl with some running water, no trouble. Now, here is the fragrant part. Ginger and garlic. If you haven't got one or the other, honestly, it doesn't matter. Slice it. Very, very easy. And let's get cooking. Get yourself a nice, large, non-stick pan. Get it nice and hot. Now, the egg element, I do something slightly different. I just want to crack the egg into this bowl. So eggs have been slightly in short supply. Last week was a bit harder. This week's a little bit better. You'll get two portions out of each one egg. A little bit of oil goes in. A little bit of oil. So let's- Wrong. I think two liter of oil, right, is a really big mistake in fried rice. Pan. So this beaten egg here goes straight in the pan and I'm gonna move the pan around and you're essentially creating like a little egg pancake. And let it cook away. And then you'll see it starts to be cooked it's quite satisfying actually in a sort of weird way. And you make this. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is, Jules. Like a little stained glass window. I, I don't I actually don't believe it. Eh? I, oh, why do I have more criticism, right? For fing Jamie Oliver, right? Then a casual BBC Herschel Patel. This actually makes Herschel Patel look quite good, you know. Eh? Tan Xiang. I mentioned this before, you need to fry the rice with the egg, right, in order to get the tan xiang. If you take, the, you fry the egg and then you remove it, right, there's no tan xiang. Uh, furthermore, you're only using one egg, so... <laughs> Second thing is when you fry an egg to such a whiteness, right, and such a, 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 a thinness, right, it has no flavor. It will be like eating um, spongy tissue paper. There's no seasoning on it, and he doesn't season it later as well. And third, and most importantly, is that this is never seen in Singapore style fried rice. You cannot call something Singapore style fried rice and then just do whatever you want. Sorry. Um, so what we're gonna do with this then is basically roll it up and I'll slice it up later and toss that through the rice. Now let's just talk about the rice. I prefer doing this with white basmati rice, but I didn't have any, run out. So that is brown rice, more nutritious, bonus. I actually added to that because I've got seven people to feed. Um, just one little nest of rice noodles, because that's all I- <sighs> It's like he purposely won it, it's like- oh. I, I, I don't believe it, I-, I, I... <laughs> Don't say Singapore, I have never- Seen people eat rice with bihun before, or, or rice vermi vermicelli. I, I'm not sure anywhere in the world they do that. And the fact that he has one nest of bihun, right, is so suspicious. <laughs> Why would you only have <laughs> 30 grams of bihun out of nowhere? The things haven't even entered the, 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 the pan yet. I had left. Basically, whatever rice or rice noodles you've got, you can use for this. I just refresh it in cold water and you definitely have to have it cold, otherwise it will not work. It will stick. Right, you can see the pan is nice and hot. A little bit of oil. I'm gonna get my sausage, slice it up into little bits. Sausage goes in. That's random, normally it's ham. Um, so this is when you can get your jiggle on. Then we can go in with our prawns. I'm only gonna use like four prawns. We can also go in with our ginger and our garlic. So give that a nice little stir up. You can see there's a little bit of colour happening now. It smells amazing in here. Okay, can you get a close up on this curry paste? Feel free to use any curry paste you want. Just a little teaspoon. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. People give Herschel Patel shit, right? For like gently scraping the rice with spoon, and you here you have. A celebrity chef just knocking on the Teflon surface. Eh? You don't do this. You you honest. This is how you spoil your non-stick pans. If you have to knock, if you honestly have to knock, like the thing is just sticking on the pan, knock on the side. So you knock on the side of the wok so that even if you scratch the Teflon surface at the tip, the, the edge of the wok, right, it's not as bad. 
And finally, we have the first remotely Singaporean, although I'm not even sure you can call it Singaporean, we have uh, some curry paste, or rather, more accurately, tikka masala spice paste. At least some element of what we eat here is being represented. Is all you need. We're going to go in with our beautiful veggies. Give it a nice little toss. The asparagus goes in. Smells really, really nice. I'm going to go in with just my portion of the rice. So I would say it's about equal quantities of veg to rice for me. And then you want to season the rice with soy sauce. I think what's really nice as well is, honestly, sorry, I've got that over the sofa. Okay, I'm really upset now. Yeah. Get like a dust sheet or something. Yeah. So look, come and have a look at this, Jay. This is that pancake that I rolled up. Can you see how what you essentially create in seconds with zero effort and no talent at all is really like... <laughs> I don't know why it's very funny when he said no talent at all. This is a cool technique. If you want it to have like, you know, cool looking garnish. But in terms of egg fried rice, uh, I'll be surprised if you can taste any egg in there. You have probably 10 ingredients in the wok with different veggies and you have one egg which you cook to shreds to such a thinness and you you know you took it out after cooking so there's no egg fragrance at all egg tagliatelle look at that and then put that into my rice to move it all around and break up all the rice okay so i'm going to plate it up now look at the colors guys that is my expression of Singapore rice. It's brilliant for now, guys. Brilliant for now. It's a fantastic dish. So look, enough yapping. Get in there. I do really like the mixture of rice and noodles. Truly, truly fair. I, I, I honestly don't even care that he uses a fork for rice. That's like, that's fair. That's fair. That's like a, a you know, Westerner kind of thing. What's not fair is a Singapore part. Flexible dish. Surf and turf, loads of veg, big enough, rice, noodles. A super flexible dish that I know will be really great for you guys now. Jules, what do you want to say? You eat that, I'll clean the cushions and uh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for the day. Fadwa, what do you reckon? Buzz is sad, not you, Buzz. Buzz is sad because he thought he'd lost he thought he River. Lost River in the river. Is he using a... Okay, fair, 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 fair. Never mind, never mind. There you go, there you go, there you go. Yeah, garden, but yeah you okay. probably lost River. <laughs> Pops, what do you reckon? It's pretty good. Right, girls, teenagers, mum, how do you find it? So good. <laughs> very, very tasty. Don't get me wrong, uh, despite all the inaccuracies, right, I'm pretty sure that fried rice is still uh, pretty good. He did a good job of uh, layering the flavours like a proper chef would and then combining the rice later. You might not get any egg fragrance at all, but there's a lot of ingredients there. Use good ingredients like sausages, uh, ginger garlic to pao xiang. But it's absolutely not Singaporean. It's either A, he doesn't know of our cuisine and what we do with our food here, or B, he doesn't care. He thinks that Singaporean cooking is just mumbo jumbo. It's anything that he says that he can put his ingredients however he like. Or C, it's both. Now I want to try to defend him. It might be that I'm too harsh on him, that this is his take on Singaporean cuisine. And perhaps it might be a bit hard for other people to understand Singaporean cuisine because we don't have any uh, unique local ingredients that we grow here, we don't have produce, and we have very limited, genuinely local dishes like fish head curry and laksa. What is special to us, we are, and as cliche as it may sound, a melting pot of flavours. For such a small country, it's incredible the number of cuisine you can get exposed to on this island. Nevertheless, to come up with a Singaporean-style recipe as a celebrity chef without knowing the half of it is it's terrible. And perhaps this is the difficulty of coming up with a Singaporean recipe, is that culinary is very very hard to represent all the different people, the, the, the different communities and you know, culinary influences we have here. But that also sounds quite fun. You know what? I'm going to try making a Singaporean style fried rice. Hey guys, I'm sorry if this video was a bit more negative. I honestly didn't expect to be so tilted. I guess I couldn't help but take things more personally this time. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching up to this point. I'm very excited to cook my take on the Singapore style fried rice. But until then, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and subscribe if you want to see more food content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. That boy is Benny Hanna.